Hey guys, what's up? I'm Charan from Just Ready Things. In this tutorial, let's take a deep dive into Polar Coordinate System. Before getting started with the tutorial, I want to thank Curtis Holt and 100 Rips for supporting me and motivating me throughout the process. Check out their YouTube and Twitter profiles, I'll leave the link in the description below. Now let's get started with the tutorial. Polar Coordinates is another way of representing points in 3D space. In general, we represent points in the Cartesian coordinate system or the rectangular coordinate system. To explain this graphically, I'll use GeoGebra. It's a similar graphical calculator like Desmos. You can find the link in the description. Now, we can see a point A. Let's place it somewhere here. Let's say 4, 4. To reach this point, we have to move 4 units along the x direction and 4 units along the y direction. We can also reach this point by traveling a distance of 5.66 radially from the origin which makes an angle 45 degrees with the x-axis. I recreated the scene in Blender. It's similar to the scene which we have seen in GeoGebra. I will call this distance as radius because if we draw a circle which passes through the point x, y with its center at origin, this distance is nothing but the radius of the circle. And let the angle made with the x-axis be theta. These two parameters are used to define a point in polar coordinate system and represented by r, theta. And now we need a way to convert these Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates. For this, let's derive something very simple using trigonometry. As we know, in a right angle triangle, sin theta is nothing but opposite by hypotenuse, which is y by r in this case. Also, cosine theta is nothing but adjacent by hypotenuse, which is x by r in this case. Also, by using Pythagoras theorem, we can say the radius is nothing but square root of x square plus y square. Now, to find the angle, let's use inverse tangent function or arc tan function. Again, by using trigonometry, we can say tan theta is nothing but y by x in this case. So, theta will be tan inverse of y by x or arc tan y by x. So we have all these formulas here. Now let's hop into shader editor and let's build these nodes. Now let's create a new material by clicking this button. Let's add a texture coordinate node and a mapping node. Shift A, search texture coordinate node. And Shift A, search mapping node. Connect the object coordinate system to the vector and now let's add a separate xyz node to separate the three axes. As we can see in the formula, r is nothing but square root of x square plus y square and theta is nothing but arc tan y by x. Now let's calculate the radius by using the formula, add a math node and change the function to power and connect the x value to the first socket and change the value to 2 in the second socket. Duplicate the math node and connect the y value to the first socket. Now add these both using another math node. And now finally we have to apply square root. We can simply select the square root function in the math node or we can change the power to 0 0.5. Both does the same trick. And this is the output of a radius. Now to find the angle, duplicate the math node and change the function to arctan2. We will be using arctan2 instead of arctan because polar coordinate system is for all 360 degrees whereas the domain of arctan is just from pi by 2 to minus pi by 2 which is just 180 degrees. So we'll be using arctan2 function which has a domain from minus pi to pi which is 360 degrees. And this will be our angle output or theta output. Let's make a node group by selecting all these nodes. Control G to make the node group. And let's plug the radius output to the group output and angle output to the group output. Let's rename the node and also the values of the group output to radius and angle. So we completed converting Cartesian coordinates into polar coordinates. Converting them back to Cartesian will be a homework. 
The solution will be posted in few days from today. Now let's stop a minute and understand what's going on with the setup. I will be using GeoGebra again to visualize a polar coordinate system. This is one of the presets in GeoGebra. This is Cartesian coordinate system, whereas this part is polar coordinate system. Here you can see R of t. It's a function of radius. So when R of t is equal to 0, it means the radius is 0. Now let's change R of t to 1. We can see there is a straight line in Cartesian coordinate system, whereas there is a circle in polar coordinate system. If you want to see the whole visualization of how this is happening, I will link a video in the description. It will go a little deep into trigonometry. Anyway, now let's change the theta here. By changing theta, we are changing the angle. It means when theta is equal to 5 is nothing but theta minus 5 is equal to 0. So we can change the angle by adding or subtracting a value from theta. In the same way, by adding or removing value from r of x is nothing but changing the radius. Now let's get back to Blender and let's understand this concept. By control shift clicking, we can toggle between radius and angle. Now we can see how radius looks. We can see a circular gradient, right? Starting from the odds into the ends. Now let's subtract a value to the radius. Add a math node and change it to subtract. Now you can see that the radius changes. Let's set this value to 0.5. You can see there's a gradient like in the previous tutorial. So you guys know how we can solve this, right? It's by multiplying the output with a higher number and clamping it. It does the trick, but there is another way of doing this too. That is by using a function called greater than in the math node. What this function does is, it checks if the value is greater than the given threshold. If this value is greater than the given threshold, then it will round it to 1. Elsewhere, it will round it to 0. But I'll be using the multiply node only because it helps us to control the fall off of the gradient. So now we can control the radius. Now let's do the same thing with the angle. I'll duplicate these nodes and connect the angle to the input. And let's see what happens. Just like in GeoGebra, the angle changes. But if you want to control the precise angle, then you can use the two radians function. This takes input as degrees and converts it into radians. This gives us more precise control over the angle. You can set the angle to 90 and you can see that it changes to 90 degrees exactly. You can change the value to any other value like 180 and you can see what happens, right? Now we have control over the angle as well. In the very beginning, we separated x and y, right? Now let's combine x and y. To combine all these axes, we can use combine xyz node. Let's add it. And bam! We made polar texture coordinates. Just like any other coordinate system, we can use this to manipulate our image. So, let me show you a quick demonstration. Add an image texture and open an image. Let me take this amazing human's image. If you don't recognize him, he's Curtis Holt, one of my favorite YouTubers. You can find his link in the description. Now let's connect the vector output of Combine XYZ node to the image input. Now let's see how this looks. And wow, this looks really good. We achieved radial symmetry out of Curtis Holt. <laughs> so this is very basic guys and let's go to something more complex. First of all, let's see how sine graph looks in polar coordinates. Here we can control the theta and let's see what happens. You can see the circle is forming again with sine graph. Now, what if we multiply this with 2? You can see that the radius increased by 2. So multiplying the function sine by any value might increase or decrease the radius. So let's keep this in mind. And let's see what happens if we multiply t with some value. You can see 
the petal starts forming. This is the beauty of polar coordinates and let's make this in Blender. It's a very simple equation, it's just sine graph and let's see what happens. So guys, here is our equation. R is equals to sine of A times theta. We can write this as R minus sine of A times theta, right? So let's add a math node and set the operation to multiply. Let's add a value node and rename it to number of petals because multiplying theta with any value results in increasing or decreasing in the number of petals as we have seen in GeoGebra. Now let's plug the number of petals to the first socket of the math node and the angle to the second socket. Now let's add another math node and change the operation to sine. Now we can plug the value of the multiply node into the sine function. Now let's subtract the whole value from the radius. Add a math node, change it to subtraction and connect the radius to the first socket and sign output to the second socket. Now let's see how this looks. We got a circle but with a gradient. We can solve this by using a multiply operation set to a high value and clamping. But let's do another method. Add a math node and set the value to greater than and set the threshold as you wish. This will solve the issue. Now let's change the number of petals. We can see that the number of petals keeps changing but we can see there's a smooth flow in the transitioning of petals. If you don't want that, we can simply add a math node and set it to round. What this does is it checks if the decimal part of the number is higher than 0 0.5. If it's true, then it will round the value to the higher number or it, or it will round the value to the lower number. This keeps the output of number of petals as integers. So we only get the full petals but not any fraction of it. Finally, let's only make the petals visible. We can do that by using a mix shader node and a principal shader node and a transparent shader node. Let's make our number of petals suitable and let's add a principal node and a transparent node. Control shift drag between the two shaders will create a mix shader setup. This will only work if the node triangular add-on is enabled. Now let us use our black and white petal image as a fractor. We want the petals to be visible, so the petals should not be affected. So our mask should be inverted. We can do this in several ways. Let me show you all the different ways we can do it. One simple way is to switch the inputs. The other way is to add an invert node between greater than and the mix shader node. All these do the same trick. We can use one or the other to get the task done. Now we can see the petals but not the background. This is what we wanted, right? And that's it guys for today. In the next upcoming tutorials, let's apply our math to generate height maps and let's understand how they work and the math behind it. And if you like the video, like, share and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any doubts, don't forget to ask me either in the comment session or in the discord server. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.